Yo, yo, today we'll be discussing APRS, or Automatic Packet Reporting System. In simpler terms, it is a form of text information data systems shared over the 2 meter or 144 megahertz band here in the United States specifically. That frequency is 144.390. If you live in Europe, New Zealand, or Australia, then you can look up your specific frequency and those parameters. Um, however, here on the port pack, all you got to do is go to this little bitty feature right there and a up there in that corner that is north america and if you scroll through that then you will be landing in your region so that is how you adjust for that the history of aprs goes back to the 1980s to simpler times such as goonies new never-ending story tron and short circuit some of my favorite movies from the 80s it was developed by bob bruninga a senior research engineer at United States Naval Academy. He first implemented APRS in the Apple II computer for ship positioning. Consider Battleship, you know, the game or the movie, that exact type stuff. So by 1982, APRS was used in a VIC-20 for horse races during endurance runs. So it helped them position where the horses were at. So interesting history there for y'all. By the mid eighties, it was adopted by organizations such as FEMA or Connectionless Emergency Traffic Systems, or CETS, as well as IBM. With the development of GPS, new features were added to APRS with position location. So what is it? Well, network-wise, it is a string of packets that are sent via the AX.25 protocol. Simplified, it is what is the backbone of IPv4 or TNC. Data wanting to be sent uh, is user-specified, is formed into packets, and they are sent over the VHF uh, radio frequencies, or that, that I guess that spectrum, through a string of digipeters, gates, radios, radio to radio, or I gates. Start by turning our unit on, right? You see here we got Mayhem. Currently I'm running the nightly 240129 version. We're gonna go to receive, go to APRS over here in the far upper right hand corner, tap on that guy. Okay, so we are in North America, that is the first area. This is our frequency. We have our antenna gain, which I have set my set to zero, always pretty much. Our VGA and our, correction, our LNA and then our VGA. I don't know what this number down here means. It's 173222, uh, so I tried looking in the manual on GitHub and did not find anything, so. If one of y'all knows, please reach out and let me know. If not, we can dive into it further and I will learn more about that. Uh, that 21 up there, that's your volume, okay? That's, we're currently using uh, the mic out into my recorder to go into the camera so you can't hear it. But if I turn that on, you hear that slight buzz and then we're gonna start getting static, 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 static. And all the way up, you get the point, right? That's your volume. So when we do receive a signal, it will ping it out on, you can go to your list or you can go to your stream. So something to discuss with APRS that we're gonna drop in here real quick is antenna choice. Um, again, I'm cheating. I'm using my actual gag antenna here on my back wall. Um, the stock antenna can receive APRS if you're in a good location outside. I have had very have, I have had much difficulty receiving APRS inside with the stock antenna. Okay, um, great antenna, the signal stick. This receives pretty well, um, mostly outside as well. Okay, this little bitty Comet SMA two hundred nine. This thing has received APRS very well actually outside. So great little antenna, uh, pretty small form factor. If you're in your vehicle, that's it. it does great little bitty antenna and it does pretty well so um again back to the yagi what does it sound like well here in a few seconds actually you know what let's just hop into it right now i want to unmute my i want to drop my volume down and then we're gonna drop an audio so you're gonna hear a slight little ring now okay and when we receive a packet which hopefully will here there's some static Okay, there you go. That little boop, 
that was a packet being received and go a little bit higher to volume and if we go to list up here here is all the current APRS uh, packages that I've received in the past uh, let's see here now about 45 minutes timing here is in UTC time so currently UTC time is 6.02 p.m. so we can see that we started receiving packages over here at 5.53 so and right now we are way up here at 6.17 so there's a discrepancy here on the quarter pack than what I'm actually got because on my watch if we can get the focus up here in the upper left hand corner you can see that i have a set for utc time um so anyways that's another discussion but that tone that you're hearing that boo -doop, that is an aprs packet similar to the old school dial-up modems if poor transmission is in play or reception we can still hear those audible tones however packets may be lost and the hack rf um, sdr or radio equipment that you're using um, will not be able to fully unpackage those transmissions the adoption and ham radio makes APRS a great off the grid form of communication systems. So say you're out of cell service, but you can still reach a local repeater. You can send a message and bounce it from repeater to, to a dig repeater that can then be received by a loved one or search and rescue if that is the case. However, keep in mind that with APRS, um, it is open for all to see. It is not encrypted because if you are familiar with ham radio licensing and uh, the SEC requirements, you cannot have encrypted messages. So open for all to see, right? Uh, so let's dive into the use on the HackRF or other forms of SDR. First and foremost, let's discuss firmware. If you're running the Mayhem V1.9.1, APRS is currently working on that firmware. I have tested it, it is working. Um, however, I am not running that firmware. We'll discuss that here in a few seconds. Now keep in mind that location, antenna choice, your LNA settings, Right, way up here, this is LNA, that 40 that you're seeing. Let's zoom this in again. Okay, so keep in mind that your settings are gonna be very de detrimental to receiving APRS and, and unpackaging them, okay? So LNA and your VGA is the second one, okay? Those settings are very, very, uh, again, detrimental in receiving APRS. Okay, so as for LNA or low noise amplifier, a booster seat for weak incoming signals without adding additional noise. That's what that's what a LNA means. That's just basic description of it. Um, I keep mine at 40. That's where I found the sweet spot for me. It works for me, it may be different for you. As for VGA or variable gain amplifier, this is used to add or take gain from, a, from the received signal chain by attenuation. I find that this adjustment is more crucial in proper reception and, and unpacking for APRS. For me, the sweet spot is 36, okay? Again, this is gonna be determined on your location, your antenna, and your unit. Outside is the best place to receive APRS with the port pack H2. I have received a few signals, but have had great difficulty in unpacking. So for me today, I've had to cheat. Um, you can't see it, it's out of frame, but my B and C here goes to an actual Yagi antenna that I will take a picture of here in a second and post it on the screen for you guys to see. Um, so uh, I have that Yagi antenna just propped against my wall behind my camera right here. Um, so you actually get to see how I make these videos, which we can discuss that in a future episode if you'd like to see how I make videos and all the fun gear I use. All right, what do you do with receipt packages? So. You can see here that we have quite a few packages that we have received, right? So down here you got this, that KL7JGS, or is it OS? GS. Um, that was received. And it is up on Mac Pass, which is a mountain uh, near my area where I live at. Um, the Y that you're seeing... Uh, that is what determines, uh, I guess, kind of like the amplitude of what things are sent at. Uh, we use wide one and wide two here. Um, and it's going to be, you won't have to worry about that with the APRS, but if you're using a ham radio of sorts, like the ASU FT3D, um, when you go into your actual APRS settings on these devices, you'll have to input wide one or wide two. So that's just kind of what that means, right? Um, this 
green one down here, you can see it's on the move. This is probably a message that is custom that was put into his or hers um, message to be sent out. You can, if, how do I explain this? So if you receive a signal and you see MPH, uh, a lot of times if you have a unit that's running GPS, like again, back to the AC, right? Um, it will, you can't, it will be using a GPS function to ping out your APRS in a speed as well. So it'll actually have that packet of speed. So say I was driving on the highway, I have my APRS set. It's going to send out a signal every two to five minutes and I'm traveling 80 miles an hour. You can see that on the portal pack and it'll say traveling 80 miles an hour. Um, more specifically, when you receive a signal on the actual Yaesu, it actually brings up a full display. So with those packages, again, what you can see is if we go to list here and this one right here, this KH7AL-9, uh, we can see that I've had four hits with that specific signal. So this that's just an automatic, that's the automatic portion of it. He has a set to um, a interval probably on his radio or his mobile vehicle, and every so often it's pinging out, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm here. So if we go into that, we can see um, some noise. This gibberish down here, I'm wondering if the the portal pack is not able to fully unpackage that or read it. Uh, if we go to map, we can see where this was at. So this is similar to the AD, ADS-B that we discussed uh, last week. Um, it's just, on a vehicle based system and more on the ham radio side of things. So we can see that um, this guy is traveling. And if we go down here, we can zoom in to see roughly about there. We can get roughly 12.5 miles within, but that's really it. So that is the gist of what you're seeing here. Let's see, this guy's up on Mac Pass. How about this guy? Oh, this guy's way down there between Helena Butte and uh, Deer Lodge. So that's kind of cool. How about this chill one? I always see this chill one. I never, never know what it is though. So this is a chill repeater ran by V, or sorry, ran by W7VNE. Let's see if we can find a good, good little far one that we can see here. That's Helena. Okay, so this guy's between Townsend and Helena, so way down there. I had one the other day that was all the way down in Idaho. It's pretty cool. So, all right. So that kind of discusses like what you're seeing here when in, in regards to um, what your list is, you know, what, of what you've actually received. Primary function, let's get into that real quick. That is going back to just simple text messaging or messaging uh, for position location um, with ham radio is mostly what it comes down to okay the i have noticed that every now and then you'll get a hit on your um porter pack that says uh, what does it say i have found that usually that is a weather station of sorts um that is just beaking it out you know whatever you want to call it you know whether it's uh, uh barometric pressure you know temperature storms coming in for some reason the porter pack that i have found doesn't like those and it'll just say like cannot open or uh, oh unknown, unknown object that's what it has what it'll say it'll pop up and say unknown object so keep that in mind if you receive one of those more than likely it is a weather station of sorts who can use aprs well if you uh under ham radio if you don't need a license to receive obviously you can receive aprs all, all day long on an sdr on the porta pack if you got a aprs equipped radio you can receive that as well um there's a few apps out there that if you can use like a radio in conjunction with your with your uh, Android or iPhone to receive APRS. However, transmission, that's where you have to get into a licensing. So APRS is technician class or higher um, to transmit. When we get into the TX side of things, we will be using the Portapec H2 to send out APRS, hopefully, to a radio source, okay? So as of right now, we're just doing the RX side of things. Um, again, this whole f series is based off of just going screen by screen by screen on the port pack H2 hacker F1, and then we will be breaking down each one of those categories, right? So today we're just doing the RX. Something cool that I am happy that I was a part of getting added to the port pack H2, and this is where it goes back to the firmware that we discussed earlier at the beginning of the video, is that I am running the nightly 012624. Because as of that, I had reached out to the GitHub group 
and I had requested an APRS feature for the ISS. Yes, the ISS satellite that flies overhead and stares at us, right? So as of now, if we go back over here to APRS, you can see, you can see where that says NA. We're gonna scroll through, there's Europe, there's Australia, there's New Zealand and ISS. So the ISS uh, space station has been added to the Porter Pack H2 as of 012624. Trying to get the ISS, which is right there. But we're not getting anything yet. However, the caveat is, is that currently the uh, ISS space station has taken APRS offline and stowed it away. Um, they are waiting for a new unit to do SSTV and APRS, which should be arriving via Spaceman February 14th, I think. So Valentine's Day, hopefully we can see some APRS back up. And then at, at that point, I'll do a quick little short on my YouTube channel of receiving ISS APRS. So... Stay tuned for that. The furthest I've been able to transmit APRS from my Yaesu HD here uh, with this signal stick antenna. This is a elastic antenna, pretty cool, about 18 inches long. It is bendable, it glows in the dark. I love this antenna. But with this unit and this, I have bounced a signal off the ISS uh, all the way to Muscon, Michigan, um, which is a good pitch. And I was able to bounce a signal off the space station, get a hit in Muscon, and then all the way back to me. So um, that's probably over like 2,200 miles. So pretty good for a little HT, right? So in closing, again, APRS is fun to use and receive signals. A lot of data is packed in a simple form. I find the most fun bouncing off the ISS as it travels overhead and seeing how far I can reach. Um, now, if this is something that the Portapec H2 can do, we will have to wait and see when we get to the TX side, as I discussed earlier. So again, hey guys, thank you always for your support. Thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, please like and subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And um, I hope to see you in the next few videos.